Hey YouTube, it's Manny. Here's part two of our two-part series on creating a YouTube thumbnail. In the first part, we create a background. Add an image to it using the Bezier tool to trim out the image's background, and then we added a border to the image. Now we're gonna add text and then go over how to modify the final product. As always, I'd like to mention that you can also find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash maniocrity, where I stream Friday, Saturday, and Sunday evening starting at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I typically play looter shooters and always enjoy playing with viewers, but if you're having any kind of issues with creating thumbnails with Inkscape, feel free to drop in during the stream and ask me while I'm streaming. I'd be more than happy to answer anything I can. You can also hit me up on the Militia Discord server for any additional help you may need. The link is in the description below. We're going to use the same project we did from part one, which has our background, image, and images border. So the first thing we're going to do is decide on which font we want to use. Google Fonts has a lot of really cool and most importantly free fonts to use. I'm going to use a font called Bangers. I think it looks really nice on thumbnails and I included a link to it in the description below. Once you download the font you want, make sure you right click the font file and install for all users. You will have to restart Inkscape in order for it to find it. Once Inkscape is restarted, our new font will be available for us to use. You'll have to decide on what the text will say and how many lines it will be. I think for thumbnails, less is more. If you start typing too much text, you'll have to use a very small font and it'll be difficult to read. I'm going to go with three lines of text. Let's first start by creating a new layer called Title above the image layer. Now select the Text Object tool, change the font to the one you want, ours is Bangers, click and type the first line of text. Select the Selection Transform tool. Make sure proportions are still locked. If they're not, click it. Now just drag the corner and make it larger, make the text larger. Just going to eyeball how big you want it to be. You can set the font to whatever color you want, but I like to use complementing colors. And since I have a blue background, I'll use orange for my text, but I'm not going to go with just a straight orange. We're actually going to use orange for the stroke, but fill with white. Let's open the fill and stroke dialog box. We're on fill, so we're just going to make this all white. Now select the stroke paint tab and activate the flat color. We're going to find the color we want below in the color select palette. We're going to use orange. Now, if I left click, it just sets the fill color, which we don't want. If you shift click, it sets the stroke color. We're now going to add another line of text, but we'll reverse the text colors. With the text selected, we'll just control C and control V to paste. Drag the new text down a bit. Using the text object tool, edit the text to what you want it to be. In the Fill and Stroke dialog box, copy the RGBA color code for the stroke and paste it into the RGBA for the fill. Go back to the stroke, drag the L all the way to the right to make it white. Let's add one more line of text. So select the Select and Transform tool, select the first line, how to make, copy, paste, drag it down a little bit. Select the Text Object tool and edit the text. Since this video is specifically about YouTube thumbnails, I'm going to include a YouTube logo. So let's organize our text a bit more to make room for that YouTube logo. Select the Select and Transform tool, then just move the text around to where you want it to make room. I'm going to put the logo right in here. All right, so open the Layers dialog box, lock the title layer, add a new layer called Product above the title. Now we're going to open the image we want, File, Open. I've already downloaded mine. It's on my desktop. I just select all the defaults. We're going to copy the image and then we're going to paste it into the products layer. You'll notice the image I downloaded has a transparent background. It's important that the logo is transparent because thumbnail will look pretty goofy if it's not. Make sure proportions are locked, move the image into the location you want, and resize accordingly to how big you want it to be. Once we've added all our images and text and everything is where we want it, we can now export it to PNG format. While we're still in the layers dialog box, we're going to unlock all the layers. Then we're going to open the export PNG image dialog box. So you can either, if you don't have, if you don't have it opened up down here, you can simply go to file, export PNG, select the select and transform tool, select all objects on the screen. Click the selection tab. If it's not already selected, the image size should be 1280 by 720. If it's not, then something got a bit hokey, but we can fix it. Just select the background image, change the width to 1280, and the width of 720. Reselect everything again. Even after this, the image size is still not 
1280 by 720. But after some playing around, I figured out that if you change the DPI settings to 96, it puts the image width 1280 and the height to 720. I did some digging and everyone says that DPI doesn't matter for electronic medium. Uh, it only matters if you're doing printed medium, but fixing this made me feel better, so I did. If you know why fixing a DPI fix the image width and height, please let me know in the comments below. The last thing we need to do is rename the file, save it to a location you can find it, and click export. And there's our thumbnail. And there you have it, a completely free and customizable thumbnail for YouTube that doesn't look half bad. You can now spend some time customizing it to your liking. You can angle the text, you can put the image on the other side, you can change the background to be an image instead of a gradient. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please hit that like button below. And if you have any other questions or even suggestions on how to do things a bit easier in Inkscape, then please leave a comment. I'd love to hear them. If you'd like to see more content like this, then please smash that subscribe button. And as I mentioned earlier, you can also follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash maniocrity, where I stream Friday, Saturday, and Sundays starting at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until next time, YouTube, take it easy.